When did that happen? Um, I don't know. It was kind of throughout. I think uh, when Fred and I kept catching each other, because we were both, I think, kind of had the same idea of like, hey, let's sit in third-ish and like just kind of stay there the whole race and see what happens. You don't feel that until after the race? Like, no. I mean, I definitely knew she was catching me, but honestly, I don't even feel it right now, so it's better. Shoe's not ripped? And no, no shoe this time. <laughs> I was a much better off the start line this race, so, you know, I learned my lesson. How do you... Two years in a row now from getting caught in a pack. That was pretty quick, but all the prelims were pretty quick. Too. Yeah, what do you, what yeah. You, um, you know, I had a feeling with the weather conditions, Hayward's fast. Um, you know, there's a lot of strong front runners in this field, I think, you know. So I expected them to be quick. I also knew my heat had a lot of really quality people. So um, uh, Pascal actually shouted out the time to me that I needed to be aware of. So going into the last lap, um, I knew I was going to probably be well under. So even being in fourth, I knew I was going to be safe to get in. So is that a blow to your confidence at all, not getting the auto spot, or do you not really? Not really. You know, um, I think prelims are funny. You always have this desire to go as easy as possible. So I think sometimes it prevents me from really going into the next year. So, um, yeah, I don't usually read into prelims too much. Unless, you know, like, the only reason I normally want to go to the front is if, like, I'm in an early heat. And that's when you really want to try to go for those auto spots because you have no idea what's going to happen. I've actually never been in heat three before. Normally I'm in that other position. Did you, did you so, like it? Huh? Did you like being in heat three? Um, there's definitely some positives to it, especially since I knew the time. But, um, yeah, I, I also sometimes prefer to focus on racing, but, you know. With a few days left, are you going back to Portland tonight? I am, yeah. So I'm going to go home for a bit, kind of get out of the chaos and also sleep in my bed, my own bed for the first time in a while, so I'll see my cat. I think it's just nice too, it kind of helps me really reset, it worked really well at the trials. Um, at USA, you just said that you were hoping to sort of have a similar bump in fitness that you had from last summer between the trials and the Olympics, but it was a shorter time period this time. Do you feel like you're fitter than you are, you know, at USA three weeks ago? Definitely, I think I really um, capitalized and made a lot of gains in that, um, yeah, kind of two weeks of training. Yeah. We really got back at, like, right into things. We, I had some really, really good workouts. Um, yeah, I, I feel excited about where I'm at, challenge myself, you know. I don't like to put a like a time or a place on things. It's more like, hey, let's like see what my best can be. And you know, that was really the mindset going into Tokyo and what led to taking the lead and stuff like that. So, um, you know, as long as you know you're your best, you can walk away like happy with the result. You can't control anyone else's. Can you tell me about the blue hair? I noticed a producer oh. in the grocery store also had like yeah. red hair yesterday. So. Yeah, um, one of our friends in Park City is a hairstylist, so she uh, just loves doing it. We always get our hair done right there, and we kind of decided to do something fun. Um, back to my college days, you know, like UNM, Power of the Turquoise. Um, it's been, a, you know, it's been a really tough year, like with the loss of my college coach. She was, um, you know, a really instrumental figure in my life during, you know, really formative years and so um, I've been really trying to like honor him through a lot of the season and half my college staff uh, from UNM is actually here. Laura's our uh, team coach for USA, Joe is here with two athletes and then Rich, one of our other assistants is also here so I actually got really emotional this morning like thinking about the fact that Miller wasn't here and like you know with the news of the move and stuff and like so important to my husband like it's been really hard not having him here so like these little pieces are just like ways to remind myself of like honor what did you make of jerry taking the oregon job um it was definitely shocking we actually only found out oh, like a week ago like a few days before the world did so um a little bit of weird timing i suppose but there's definitely a lot of pros to it you know i was actually like seeing parts of the stadium that I'd never seen as we were walking out onto the track today. And I was like, oh wow, there's an anti-gravity treadmill room. Like, <laughs> things like that. So a lot of pros, just, you know, like, a lot of the other pieces of, like, trying to figure out moving, like, what is my husband going to do, stuff like that, I've kind of had to table. But, um, yeah, certainly excited to be welcomed by the Eugene community, like, excited about the phenomenal facilities, and, um, you know, I think, I think Jerry will do a great job, I think our staff will do a great job here. I mean, do you think you'd be able to stay in Portland if you wanted to? Um, I suppose, you know, it is close enough, but 
Um, you know, one thing that you know I, I think our team does a really good job of is operating as a team. You know, we all go to camp, we all live together, and something that this provides that we actually have been missing in Portland because Nike campus have been shut down for so long was, you know, that sort of feeling of like a central meeting point where, you know, we're all like kind of foam rolling, activating together. And, and we were doing that because we were still running at Nike and stuff. But, um, you know, I think that this will make it one step further to kind of getting that college team feel for us as well. Because um, I think that kind of model works really well. So, but I do think that you could stay in Portland and commute. So, but I am excited. I do think the running is a lot better here than it is in Portland personally. So, um, but yeah, lots to figure out. Yeah. Are you worried about the divided attention at all? He's going to have a lot more athletes to coach. He now? certainly is going to have a lot of athletes, but um, you know, thankfully we do have a lot of staff and. Um, you know, I have a really close relationship with Pascal and Shalane as well. So, you know, I do think between all of our staff plus our PT, like she actually lives with us when we're at camp as well. So, um, you know, every time Jerry wants to take on something new, I always am like, oh my gosh, but he always amazes me. You know, his mind never stops going. So, have they told you if Shalane and Pascal are going to be? also join the Oregon stuff or are they just um, staying on the BTC? I think that's being figured out right now. I know with speaking with Pascal, like um, he really wants to be focused on the pros, which I think is great. Like I think we absolutely need that and like um, like I said, he's super instrumental in my my personal like training and, and just like getting me like ready to go and obviously with the sequel chase and stuff like that. So um, yeah, I know that that's his goal and so hopefully that happens. But yeah, I think they're working on all the assistance and stuff. So, yeah, you know, like when we're all just done, my husband and I are gonna drive around, like check out some of the neighborhoods. So it is kind of weird. Like, it, whenever we all like got off the plane, there was a sign that said "Welcome Home" like in the airport, and we just kind of chuckled. We're like, "Oh gosh, this is this is home." <laughs> so, it's <just> weird. <laughs> Thanks, Courtney. Thank you.